Oh, what time is it, you're asking me? It's 1.20, and I didn't look at my laptop for that. So I've always been interested in the idea of wearable tech. It's cool, it's hip, it makes you feel like a cyborg. But something that was really cool when I first heard about it was Google Glass. At the time, I hadn't really heard of a lot of like transparent screens or overlay type HUD displays. Um, I kind of just saw things in like Iron Man where you just see kind of like floating holograms in front of you. Um, and I always thought that was a really cool idea. You could actually create this kind of HUD overlay by simply putting a screen over one of your eyes. That way, you know, you can see the real world with your uh, left eye and you can see the display with your right eye, something like that. So I kind of wanted to try something like that. So I got my Arduino, it's Arduino R3, and I found this display that I had. It is an SSD 1306. It's 128 by 64 and it's 0.96 inches in size. Uh, and it, use, I, it uses I2C to communicate with the Arduino. So in order to get it actually like close to my face without it, you know, uh, having to sit way out in front of me, uh, I used this lens that I popped out of a Google Cardboard, which is this kind of like handheld VR type of uh, type of headset where you stick your phone in there and it turns it into like, you know, like a portable VR headset. So I popped those lenses out and um, as you can see, when you put it in front of that display, you can kind of see it as if it were a little bit further away. Now I use some premium building materials to create some sort of hollow box type of prototype. A problem with this though is that in practice it kind of stuck, stuck out like really far in front of my face and uh, I didn't really like that. I, I felt like it was kind of wonky. So um, you know I decided it, an easy way to fix that would be to just get a mirror and kind of put it like in front of your eye at an angle so that the display could be off to the side or above or something like that. But then I got to thinking. If you're going to use a mirror anyway, why not just use glass? If you use glass, um, you can reflect the display on the glass, but you can also see through the glass and see the real world. That way you're actually getting the kind of overlay effect that, uh, that people think is cool, that I think is cool. So I got to testing. I found this little uh, smartwatch screen protector. Um, it's, it's glass, but it's pretty small, and it's, uh, it's like about the right size to kind of reflect things off of. So I, I tried to put it up against my computer screen to see how well it reflected. And it did a pretty decent job. My only problem with this, uh, this screen protector is that it has adhesive on one side. And to get a clear vision of, like, the, of the hologram, I would have to kind of peel off the, the protective layer of the adhesive. And I didn't want to have to deal with that. So I did try to cut like a, like a lens out of some plastic packaging. Um, that didn't go so well. The, the packaging is kind of like warped, so the reflection didn't look all that great. But luckily I was able to find this nice little this little square um, picture frame kind of glass. And so this glass is you know a good thickness, it's very rigid, and it's also very flat. So as you can see, the reflection looks pretty good in it. The only problem is there's this kind of doubling effect since the glass kind of reflects on both surfaces. But if you kind of tilt the glass at a tighter angle to the display, you kind of reduce that effect, which is pretty nice. So once I got to this point, I realized that I was pretty okay with hardware. I, I, I really got as far as I could without actually having to test the real stuff. So I moved on to the software. So my base expectations for what I wanted to build was something that could show me the notifications that are popping up on my phone um, and perhaps tell the time, like when it's just sitting idle. I also wanted the device to be wireless. Um, I don't want to have to like have a wire connected to my phone or like connected to the computer or anything like that. So in order to kind of deal with the wireless problem, uh, I found my Raspberry Pi Zero wireless, um, which runs full Linux. Uh, the thing's a full computer, um, and it's also very small, which is very useful. So one solution for mirroring notifications is an app called Pushbullet. Uh, the app, uh, at least on my phone, is free. So I was able to get the app and enable mirroring of notifications and luckily enough, they have an API that I can access uh, on the Raspberry Pi. So I set up a Node.js script to basically connect to this WebSocket stream that Pushbullet puts out. And whenever a notification shows up on my phone, uh, Pushbullet will mirror that notification to the API stream. As long as my script is connected to that stream, um, I'll be able to get the notifications that I need to see. I was also really lucky to find libraries in Node.js that allowed me to both interface with the OLED display that I have, as well as interface with easy WebSockets. So as far as code goes, this was a goldmine. 
small hiccup though was that there is no hardware support on that OLED display for like a sideways uh, display and I was tilting my display sideways so that it would kind of like fit against my face a little bit better. Um, so to overcome that, all I really had to do was flip the X and Y in the draw pixel function, um, which comes in that library that I mentioned earlier. So that is a little bit messy, but it worked. So I'm not complaining as of now. Um, I might have to go back and make that a little bit better. So at this point, I feel like I had the software working pretty well. So I went back to the hardware. Um, I, I got my hollow box thingy and uh, turned it from this into this, which is uh, it's, it's now it's got a, a headband. Um, and if you're wondering what this kind of bump is here, that's uh, a smartphone battery pack that I was able to slide into a compartment. Um, this battery pack actually has ports that allow me to both charge the battery pack from the outside as well as power the Pi um, from like the same side, which made it really easy for me to design like an opening. All that's left now is to connect this to the actual Raspberry Pi. Unfortunately, I don't have solder right now. Um, I did order solder, but because of that, I'm going to have to kind of just plug things in and just kind of hope they kind of stay where they are. So I've kind of designed it so that the pie kind of lays against this back surface and the pins can kind of uh, attach into it. So I patched up a lot of the openings and now it's got a pretty solid form. If you look through the lens, you can actually see the display, albeit a little bit distorted. And finally, I added the glass. I had to adjust it a little bit to make sure that I could see the actual uh, the actual display at the edge of my vision. But at this point, the structure is pretty much done. So to finish up, I wrapped it up with some duct tape, helped it kind of hold together a little bit better, and it looks kind of nicer. Uh, and then I set the script uh, for the Raspberry Pi to run on startup, so that way I wouldn't have to like SSH into the Raspberry Pi and start it up every time. But yeah, here's a look at the final product. Oh yeah, and this part, um, I asked my sister to help demo, so she kind of just texted me something so that you guys can see what it looks like when I actually get a notification. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, this device is probably not super useful, um, but it was a lot of fun to build. I really enjoyed it, helped me learn a lot of things, and luckily enough, a lot of the stuff that I needed to work with um, were kind of readily available. Who knows, uh, I may also add some other stuff to it. You know, I've got some other sensors that I could try to throw onto it. Um, you know, I could connect it to other WebSocket streams and put on other real-time information. I could even write like an app that, you know, I could use to like switch up the HUD or control it from my phone. That'd be kind of cool. And even though I did all this for, you know, like 10 words of information at like the right hand edge of my vision, um, I think it was worth it. Not to mention that it's actually pretty cheap to build. A lot of the parts that I've used in this build are pretty much under five bucks online, um, either like through eBay or like maybe even Amazon. So if you guys want to build this, uh, build this project, um, you know, just remember that the display is an SSD 1306. Um, the smartphone battery pack, pretty standard stuff. Raspberry Pi, also pretty standard. I think that's like 10 bucks or 15 bucks if you want the like SD card built in um, and then like the wiring I mean if you have wiring great if not you could probably order some wires for like under five bucks as well oh yes I will also probably upload my code to github and I'll link that in the description when I get that up anyway thank you for watching um, if you guys have any ideas of other things that I could make I've got like an Arduino some servos and um, some DC motors some random other stuff like that if you have any ideas, put it down in the comments. Maybe I'll check them out. Maybe I'll try some of them out. So yeah, see you next time.